Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes to Code, Programming Basics with your host, Matthew C. Applegate. In this series, we are going to look at the fundamentals of computer programming and hardware. So whether you are hoping to program in Python, to code in C-sharp, or to develop in Java, these short guides should help you get to grips with the basics. You won't need to download or install any software, so just sit back and enjoy. Today, we are going to look at variables and operators. So let's look at this in more detail. In computer programming, variables are the names given to different values. They are a vital part of computer programming. So the sooner we get to grips with them, the better. So let's imagine you are playing a video game and you have three lives. The variable could be called lives and the value of that variable could be three. If we ask the computer to print lives, it would print the number three. Another example would be if you had collected 30 coins, the variable could be called coins and the value would be 30. These would both be examples of integer variables because the values stored are whole numbers. And of course there are several different types of variables. So let's look at those. Imagine we are collecting the temperature and it is 17.5 degrees. The variable could be called temperature or temp and the value would be 17.5. This type of variable is called a float as it has a decimal point. We can call the variable what we want, temperature or temp. The shorter, the better, that way is less typing. But it is important to be able to understand what the variable is and what value it is storing. So name your variables appropriately. We can also use it to store names of things by using what is called strings. So let's imagine we are playing a game and it asks us to input our name and we answer Steve. The variable could be called name and the value could be Steve. You can also have booleans. Now these are variables that can only be true or false. Imagine we are playing a game and the program asks the following two conditionals. If walking is equal to true, can jump equals true. If jumping is equal to true, can jump equals false. This would allow a character to jump when walking, but prevent it from jumping again while it is in the air. Booleans are very useful for variables that can only have two states, true or false. They have the added advantage of taking up a small space in the computer's memory, but this is less important on modern computers, as they often have more than enough memory. Okay, I think that is enough for variables. There is of course more to it than what we have covered, but I think that is enough to get us started with operators. Operators allow us, you guessed it, to perform operations on variables. The simplest and most common operation would be to add two numbers together. So the operator here is the plus or addition symbol. Let's look at this example. A equals 1. B equals 2. C equals A plus B print C. The computer would print the number 3. Pretty straightforward. Even though we are adding two variables together and not numbers, it is pretty obvious what is happening. It is taking the values contained within those variables and adding them together, then printing it. You can do the same with minus or the subtraction symbol. A equals 1, B equals 2, C equals B minus A, print C. This would print 1. Again, this is very similar to the addition example. Here is one that people get a little confused with. It is the is equals 2, the two equal symbols together. If I said a equals 1, it would give a the value of 1. But if I asked if a is equal to 1, it would check the value in a and see if it is equal to 1. If it is, it will do the code that follows. Now conversely, if I had said, if a exclamation mark equals one, it would check the value in a and see if it is not equal to one. If it is not equal, this will do the code that follows, which leads us nicely onto the less than and the greater than operator. The best way to remember these are the arrow or the point points towards the smaller of the two values. Here is an example. If a is less than one, 
This will check the value of A and do the code that follows if it is less than one. Conversely, if A is greater than one, this will check the value of A and do the code that follows if it is more than one. And there you have it. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If you have, be sure to subscribe to my channel, like the video and comment below if you found it useful. If you want to get started in programming right away, be sure to check out my computer art programming tutorials here. Until next time, thanks for watching 5 Minutes to Code. 